Welcome to our virtual service for Palm West Community Church, June 28th, 2020. We are especially glad this morning to have with us Pastor Jim Kennan, the lead pastor of Inspired Church that meets here in Sun City West. And so we anticipate just great blessing as we worship together this morning, wherever you are and whatever day and time you're watching this video. Welcome all who gather to this time for worship. In the beginning, God's voice was heard, let there be, and the atoms were stirred, and life leapt forth in response to his will until Cain taught us how to kill. And since that time, the struggle has been to live in tune with God's plan for women and men Jesus came to redeem and restore and to give us life that is so much more than our fickle hearts could want or imagine. Come to the throne of grace. God wants you to seek his face. No one is worthy in this place. So tune your hearts to his amazing grace. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, his child and morning church or afternoon or evening depending on when you are watching this. As I so often say, I encourage you to look at our, our update and prayer email as that has a full list of the many, many needs that are confronting us as a church family. We learned last week that Martin Vogt passed away on June 11th and prayers go out to his family, his friends. And then we learned that Archie White passed away on June 17th. Please keep his wife Beverly and their family in your prayers also. We pray for the many, many health concerns that impact our church family. This morning I actually went over our email and we've got 51 names listed there of different challenges, health concerns that are, are besetting us as a church congregation and then the, the numerous needs that we don't even know about. We pray for our homebound. We remember the continuing health concerns for our extended family, those family and friends of our Palm West regular attenders. You know, yesterday I got a, a book from Pastor Bruce that is a collection of prayers, a collection of Psalms. And I'm gonna pull our scripture for these needs out of this collection of the Psalms and also my prayer. 
It says deep inside we long to be made whole. Sometimes, marvelously, sickness can lead to greater wholeness. Wherever our challenges take us, we pray for God's shalom, God's peace. This is Psalms chapter three. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. And then Psalms chapter 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. I call upon you, for you will answer me. O God, incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Guard me as the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Won't you join me as we pray? Father, set your love and care like a shield around us. Give to all who are hurting or suffering the confidence to know that you lift our heads from sadness and weakness. You do hear our prayers and help us. We call upon you for help, O oh God, because you promise to hear us and answer us. Show us your love and your care, your provision to us who seek refuge in you. Guard us as your treasure and hide us in the shadow of your wings. Help us walk with us now through the dark times of life. Comfort, restore, and pursue us with your goodness. And we pray all of these things in the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Sent his only son to save us. He died upon a cross for all my sin. I praise the precious name of Jesus.
Dottie and Jan, thank you so much. Hey, Palm West, it's great to be here today. And I got to let you know that I've made some changes in my life since the last time I was able to come and uh, share God's word with you. I've taken up some hobbies. And uh, one of the hobbies I wanted to tell you about today is I, I've uh, learned how to become a sculptor. It just seemed like something would be fun during this time of COVID uh, shutdown. So I want to give you an example of what I can do now. Uh, one of my specialties, I've got some very expensive molding clay here. Looks suspicious, suspiciously like Play-Doh. But I've discovered that I am really, really good at making snakes. So if you ever need a snake made, I'm the guy to come to. Hold your applause, please. I'm also really good at making... Ashtrays, very good at that. Seriously, uh, when you get to know me, what you discover is I have like zero artistic ability. It frustrates me in life, but uh, things like sculpting, painting, any type of artwork, I'm not the guy you want to turn to. I'm terrible at that. Even my handwriting is bad. Uh, I would say that I write on the level of maybe a kindergartner, but that would insult kindergartners. Um, just imagine, though, uh, that you were uh, very, very wealthy. I said imagine. So let, let, let's say you were really wealthy and you wanted to commission someone to create a sculpture for you, maybe to put it in the entryway to your home. You were willing to pay $10 million for a masterpiece just for your home. Now, chances are, having seen my snake and ashtray, you would not ask me to do that. If you want to pay me $10 million to do that, text me after the sermon today. I'll give you the sermon discount of $8 million. But there's no way you're going to ask me to create a masterpiece for your home. If you're going to spend $10 million on a piece of art, you're going to engage the talents of someone who knows what they're doing, somebody who's very good. You're going to engage a master sculptor. Today in our passage from Jeremiah 18, we see a picture of God as the master sculptor. And the good news in this passage is that God is busy creating arts of work out of your life and out of my life. And the good news is God really knows what he's doing. He's really good at it. And uh, we can trust to put our lives in his hands. Before we open up our Bibles to Jeremiah 18, I want to share with you one thought today, one truth that I want you to put in your head, put in your heart, as we look at this wonderful passage of the potter and the clay. Here's the truth I want you to get before we begin. God creates something beautiful in our lives when we are flexible and pliable in his hands. Let that sink in for a minute. God creates something beautiful in our lives when we are flexible and pliable in his hands. Let's open our Bibles today. Let's turn on our Bibles. However you interact with God's word, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah 18. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. There I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot. 
shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The Lord said, can I, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up, planted, and it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says. Look, I'm preparing a disaster for you, devising a plan against you, so turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our own plans. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. One of the things that makes the book of Jeremiah so special is that when God spoke to and through Jeremiah, God often used object lessons, wonderful images, illustrations, and metaphors. And today in Jeremiah chapter 18, God delivers his message through the metaphor of a potter making a clay pot. The potter and the clay. Uh, this is a message to the, uh, to the nation of Israel, specifically to the southern uh, nation of Judah, to the people of Jerusalem encouraging them to turn from their evil ways. They had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Their hearts had begun to drift from God. They were doing things they should not be doing. And God is warning them, if you don't change, destruction is going to come upon you. So Jeremiah is told to go to the potter's house. In his day, everybody knew where the potter's house was because the potter's house was central to life in Jeremiah's day. Anthropologists tell us that the, um, uh, the creation of pottery, the ability, the discovery on how to make clay pots literally changed the course of human history. Before pottery was discovered, uh, humanity was primarily migratory. Uh, we were nomads because we had to move from food source to food source, water source to water source, because we had no way to store food. We had no way to store water. But when human beings discovered how to make clay pots, everything changed. Now all of a sudden, we could raise crops and store them. We could find a good water source and store the water. And with the creation of pottery, communities began to develop. People were able to live in one area. So uh, pottery literally changed the world. And in Jeremiah's day, life revolved around the potter's house. So Jeremiah goes to the potter's house and he watches the potter creating a pot. In Jeremiah's day, pottery was a little different than it is in our world today. As a matter of fact, containers were different. In Jeremiah's day, Potteries, which pottery, which was a container used to store things, served two purposes. It was both functional, but it was also beautiful. 
Our world's not really like that. Uh, The things that we create to store things are not necessarily uh, beautiful. We store things in paper bags, in plastic bags. We store things in uh, barrels. We store things in stainless steel containers. And normally we don't look at those things and we go, wow, that is a beautiful plastic bag. That's got to be the most beautiful paper bag I've ever seen. I went into our kitchen and and got a Tupperware container out of the drawer. We use this to store stuff. My wife and I would never think of putting this out on our living room table, hoping that guests would come and say, that's gotta be the most beautiful piece of Tupperware we've ever seen. It wasn't created for beauty, it was created for functionality. But I also went to our kitchen and pulled down a Chinese vase off the top of our cabinets. Uh, To me, this is beautiful. Matter of fact, it's in our kitchen with the hope that guests will come and say, wow, what a beautiful vase you have up on top of your cabinets. But never have Sue and I thought, you know, we ought to store stuff in this. This would be a great place to put flour or sugar. I got an idea, let's store Cheerios. You see, in our world, uh, vases and containers of any shape or size are either made to be functional or they're made to be beautiful. In Jeremiah's time, it was not unusual for a container, a vessel, a pot to serve both purposes. The potter would create something which was both beautiful and both functional. So as we look at Jeremiah 18 and the potter and the clay, uh, we discover that God creates people like you and people like me. He creates us with both purpose, functionality, and beauty. And I think that it is an amazing thing to remember that when God puts you together, he puts you together for a purpose and he puts you together for beauty. As we look at Jeremiah 18, we see three objects in the lesson. There are three objects in the illustration in the story. There's the clay, there's the potter, and there's the wheel. Let's consider the clay. Every container in Jeremiah's day was made out of clay. There was no stainless steel. There were no plastic bags. There was no Tupperware. Every container was made out of clay. It was common. And in this uh, image of the potter and the clay, the clay represents the nation of Israel. But I wanna stretch it a little bit and also say that it not only represents the nation of Israel in Jeremiah's day, but it represents you and me. It represents all people who are in the hands of the great potter. The word human comes from the Latin word humus, which simply means dirt. What do you get when you take dirt and add water. You get mud or clay. So in this picture you have the clay that's on this wheel at the hands of the potter and the only requirement of the clay, the only thing that's required is for the clay to yield to the hands of the potter. The only requirement for the clay is to yield to the artistic touch of the potter. So as we consider the clay, we can see that all it needs to be is soft and pliable. It needs to be pliable and flexible. It has to be shapeable. And if the clay is not shapeable, it is of no use to the potter. So we have the clay, soft and pliable. We have the potter. And in the potter, we see that the potter has complete 
and cre- he has complete creative control. The potter calls the shot. It's obvious in this passage, God is the potter. And as God and as the potter, he has complete creative control over the pot. In verse four, we're told that as this potter is making this pot, bringing this pot to life, he notices that it it has a mar. There's something wrong with it. And so it says that the potter reshapes the pot. He turns it into something different. Verse four says, he shaped it as it seemed best to him. God has complete creative control over the clay. Let's learn a couple of Hebrew words. Uh, The first word is yatzer. Yatzer, if you're watching uh, this worship service today with uh, somebody sitting next to you, just turn to, next, just turn to that person and say, yatzer. Now you've just spoken Hebrew today, that's cool. Yatzer is the Hebrew word, it's a verb which means to shape or to mold. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, there's a well-known verse where God is speaking to Jeremiah. He's giving Jeremiah his commission. And in Jeremiah 1, 5, God says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I formed you, before I shaped you, the word that's used there is the word yatzer. God says, Jeremiah, before you were ever born, before I yatsered you in your mother's womb, I already knew about you. I already had a plan and a purpose for your life. So yatser means to shape or to form. In Jeremiah 18, the Hebrew word for potter is yotzer. Again, turn to that person sitting next to you this this morning, this afternoon, and and simply say, Yotzer. Yotzer is the one who yatzers. The Yotzer, the potter, is the one who shapes the clay. So think about this. God is saying to Jeremiah, before you were even born, I had plans to shape you in your mother's womb. And now in Jeremiah 18, I am still shaping you. God shaped you before you were even born. And God continues to shape you throughout your entire life. So we have the clay We have the potter, and we have the wheel. The wheel tells us that the potter controls the speed. The potter controls the speed. As as it's fascinating, uh, maybe some of you even do pottery at at the Pottery Club of Sun City West. Um, The wheel that the potter used in Jeremiah 18 is pretty much the same as the wheel that a potter would use today. It's a wheel that turns, that's what it does. And whether it was back in Jeremiah's day or today, the potter controls the speed of the wheel. I believe that the wheel represents life and the potter controls the wheel. The potter controls the circumstances of our life. God determines whether life needs to go faster or life needs to go slower. God determines the seasons of our lives. The clay has no say in what happens with the wheel. The clay has no say in what the potter does with the clay. 
the potter determines the speed of the wheel because the potter determines life. The potter determines the shape of the clay because the potter is in control. The image, the lesson of Jeremiah 18 has not changed through the centuries. It is still the same. You and I are clay in the hands of the potter. And he determines what we become. From our perspective, the requirements are the same. We need to be flexible and we need to be pliable. The problem is that we lose our flexibility and we lose our pliability. Did you ever notice that as we get older, our physical flexibility decreases? You are looking at one of the most unflexible human beings on the planet. I can touch my toes right now if you give me a yardstick. That's the only way it's gonna happen. As we get older, our physical flexibility decreases. And what I noticed is that if we're not careful, our spiritual flexibility decreases. Verses 11 and 12. God says, say to the people of Judah, he basically says, you got to change your act. You got to get it together. You got to be flexible. You got to be pliable. Verse 12, but they will reply, it's no use. We will continue with our own plans. We will follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. Can you hear the inflexibility there? Can you hear the unpliability? Can you hear the stubbornness? When we lose our flexibility, when we lose our pliability, we lose our usefulness to the potter. So the answer is to continue as we go through life to be flexible in the hands of the potter. The answer is to continue to be pliable in God's hands. I've got to tell you, now more than ever, we as God's people and we as God's church need to be flexible. Back when we started Inspire Church, we had our launch team. Some of you that are listening to this message today were on our launch team. And you remember, before we held our very first preview service, I asked a friend named JD. I said, JD, what do I need to tell our launch team as we get started? And he thought about it and he said, Jim, there's two words you need to give to your people. You need to tell them, be flexible. And he said, you need to tell them to smile. He said, you need to tell them to be flexible because when you start a church, your plans are always going to change. And then he said, you gotta tell your people to smile because everything that can go wrong is gonna go wrong. And that our job as leaders and as a team is to smile no matter what happens. So at Inspire, we have taught our people that uh, the two words you need to remember if you wanna be a part of our church, you gotta be flexible and you need to what? Smile. I am so thankful for that flexible thing. Back in December of 2019, and in January of 2020, Pastor Brian Hitch and myself sat down, we prayed together, we dreamed, we schemed, we strategized, and we came up with all the plans that we had for Inspire Church for 2020. We even had refrigerator magnets made. We called it Vision 2020. And the catchphrase was, see more clearly. And we had it completely figured out what we were going to do through Inspire Church in 2020. And then March came. 
and the pandemic came and every plan that we had devised went up in smoke. Napoleon was known for being a very strong-willed, stubborn leader. But later in his life, he began to change. He found himself in exile on the island of St. Helena. And while he was on the island of St. Helena, Napoleon said something that you would never have heard him say before. He said, man proposes, but God disposes. Man proposes, God disposes. What he was saying was we make our plans and God changes them. One of my favorite phrases over the last month has been, I'm going to start writing my plans in butter. Because I've learned the hard way the importance of being flexible. I love Palm West. And I would encourage this church to be flexible in the season of COVID-19. Be flexible, write your plans, pray about your plans, strategize your plans, but write them in butter because the potter just might decide to change the speed of the wheel. The potter determines our shape. The potter determines our future through his plans and not ours. So church, please be flexible. Now, let's wrap this up. What I'm about to say, I don't even want to say. It's a warning. But because I love Palm West, because I love your leaders, because I love the people of this church, I have to share the warning with you. It's not my warning, it's God's warning. Because this picture of the potter and the clay doesn't end in Jeremiah 18. In Jeremiah 19, God has something else to say to his people through the prophet. So God tells Jeremiah to take a vase that is formed and has been hardened. And he says to Jeremiah, I want you to take the leaders, the elders and the priest outside of the city, and I want you to take this vase. And when you gather them out there, I want you to warn them that destruction is coming. Why? Because their hearts have hardened. And God says to Jeremiah, I want you to take this vase and smash it before the people. In verse 15 of chapter 19, we read, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Listen, I'm going to bring on this city and all the villages around it every disaster I pronounced against them because they were stiff-necked and would not listen to my words. Stiff-necked means they had lost their flexibility. They had lost their pliability and they were no longer useful to the potter. Can I ask you today, how's your flexibility? How's your pliability? Are you willing to yield to the master's artistic touch. Would you just pray this simple prayer with me? Repeat these words with me. Almighty God, 
you are the potter, I am the clay. You are in control. And today, I yield to your will. God, I ask you to continue to create something purposeful and beautiful out of my life. I trust you. I love you. And I yield to you. In Jesus' name, amen. In 1902, a woman named Adelaide Pollard had a dream of going to Africa and serving God as a missionary. But she couldn't afford to go. She didn't have the finances that were necessary. She became greatly discouraged. One evening, she went to a prayer service at her church And as she sat there, she overheard an elderly woman say, it really doesn't matter what you do with us, Lord. Just have your own way with our lives. That elderly woman inspired Adelaide Pollard. She went home that night And she contemplated the story of Jeremiah 18, the potter and the clay. And before she went to bed that night, she wrote all four stanzas to the hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me, make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way. We're so glad you joined us today. It's our hope and prayer that this worship video helps you feel connected to the Palm West family and is a blessing to you. Now let me remind us of the job that Jesus has for us. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God bless you.